Hi there. Right, um, this is going to be my third applique picture video um, to go alongside the, the PDF downloads over on my blog. All the information for this will be in the um, down in the description down below. This one's going to be a camper van and a bit of a beach scene. Um, all prepared and just ready for me to stitch it. And yeah, I'm just going to go for it. So the machine is all set up. I'm just pulling the machine towards me um, so that I can work and you can see what I'm doing. The machine is all set up for free machine embroidery. Um, feed dogs are lowered. Um, mine's automatic. It sets up the tension and stitch length. But you would, if you have a manual machine, you need to reduce the tension until your machine is stitching happily and um, set the stitch length to zero as well. Right, so we're going to do the camper van first. And then once the camper van is all stitched, we're going to move on to the scenery around it. Let's see where to start. Right, I tend to start at the corner. I've done lots of these. I tend to start at the corner of the bumper there. And I go around the out outside. And when I've got a long straight bit like that, for my first pass, I always do two... I always stitch there and back. Um, and then on the first pass I much prefer to be able to see where I'm going by having it um, moving the fabric from front to back under the just like you would normally sew. I just feel it makes it a little bit more accurate for me. Right so back along here down to this corner and then we're going to go around again but as we go the second time we're going to pop some of the details in so we're going to do the tyres next now they are black and you are stitching in black but I still like to put a little bit of detail on because it does catch your eye when you're looking at the picture we go around once start to come back and then just put a little line in it can be wiggly it can be straight to the tread on the tires you don't have to do this but I actually like the look of it it's just straight one there and then another wiggly one that side there you go and then back up to your line oh thread's broken I stayed put in one spot too long and I think that just broke the thread. I didn't have any of this hassle on my first video but this one, the last two, seems to be uh, doing that. Never mind, you get to see me threading my machine about 90 times so that's good. Okay, wherever we left off there. Okay, and this time I'm going to go around the number plate. Bumper. and then we'll do this tyre same as we did last time if you want to a little bit of tread on the tyre just gives it a bit of texture and a bit of detail it doesn't have to be perfect just it's just a nice little finishing touch around here and back to this corner I'm going to go up there but then I'm going back into that corner and I'm going to start stitching around the outside of the camper van all the way around the outside and down to the other side around the corner so that I can see where I'm going. I'd like to do as much as I can without having to break the thread and start again. That's it, 
it down to the bumper and then we're going to go up to here. And again, just because I like to, so I can see where I'm going, I'm going to turn that around that curve. And I'm going to turn it again. And then carry on around the outside. Here, and we're going to sew around the curve on this side. And we're going to turn it again, just because I like to. Right, so that's all of the actual outline completed and now we're going to start on putting the details in and I'm going to start with the front screens go around the whole of that of each of these windows once I'm a bit wobbly but I decided not to turn it that time and I, and I wobbled but hey Right, and then we're going to go part way along here and then I just put a little um, windscreen wiper shape in just because I like that bit of detail just to break up that expanse of white. Let's turn it this time so I can, this time I'll go back over it and try and straighten that up a bit. That's the nice thing about doing two lines of stitches. If you muck it up the first time, you don't really see it once you've gone over it nice and straight the second time. And if you muck it up, in your opinion, both times, because it's, other people might not notice it looks a bit, a bit uh, wobbly, um, it doesn't matter. But I'm nice and relaxed and free with it. look at these and think well they'd never work because they're in the wrong place but it doesn't matter because it's not real there we are that's that second window and then we're going to do the um the heart shape in the middle the what would be the logo for the company now this time i'm going to go around the whole circle once and do the heart. You can put whatever you like in the middle there. Um, for this particular design I chose to do a heart because I thought it looked pretty and really summery. Flower. Star shape, anything you like. Right, so we've done that. Then we go on to do the um, headlights and indicators. When you're doing circles, it's a tiny, tiny movement in your fingers just to guide the fabric round in a circle. Not a great big movement. Just do it gently and it's absolutely fine. Let's get all these threads off because they start to annoy me after a while. You can leave them all to the end and cut them off at the end, but I actually like it trimmed as I go. There's that one. And then we'll do the headlights. And for the headlights, I tend to do two, two lines of stitching. So one right around the outside. And then go over that again. 
solidifies that line nicely if you go over it again. And then the other line we're going to do just inside that, and I think it looks like you've got then got the um, the outside of the the light fitting. So that's just my machine telling me there is a thread jam. And then just a little bit, maybe about an eighth of an inch inside that line. Doesn't have to be accurate. And mine's gone a bit wobbly, but I don't mind that. Again, it just gives it that little bit more detail. If you can see there. And do the last one, and then we do the uh, finish the number plate. It doesn't always go to plan every time and I'm a bit overtired today so <laughs> I'm not surprised it's a bit wobbly. That's it and then just that second line of stitching. The thing is we're not robots so if it looks handmade it's because it is handmade. To... Again, you can write whatever you like. You can put somebody's name in the number plate if you want to, as long as it fits. Let's just scoop that thread to one side. Rather than cutting it, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So in between your um, letters, rather than cutting it, lift up the foot which releases the tension and then you can scoop the thread to one side and do your next letter. Do that again, foot up, scoop the thread to one side and do your last one. And cut your thread and then you've got these little loops here and you just trim them off really close to your stitching. And it saves time, it saves thread as well. There's a dog just walked past. He's probably going to start tapping on the back door, wanting to go out in a minute. Right, I'm going to do the clouds next. Let's turn this so I can see where I'm, where I'm at. that again. There's one, let's do the other one. made a right mess of that. Went a bit too quick then. Not really a problem. Maybe go a bit slower around there. So we've got the camper van and the two clouds done. I'm going to just do the um, top edge of the sand next and I'm going to do it a little bit sort of wobbly, give it a bit more texture. Do that bit. and utterly flat along that edge so a bit of a wobbly line looks a bit nicer and then 
side. And across to this side. Okay. And then we're going to do the um, parasol. And after that, probably the surfboard. There's no set pattern to which one you need to do in which order. Um, I just kind of go with how I feel. Um, sometimes I tend to put off the things I don't want to do till the end. Right, so this is kind of buried in the sand a bit. So we're going to do a little squiggle on the sand to make it look like that's embedded in there. Up one side. And then I'm going to get onto the actual parasol part of it. Going to go around here. And here. And now I'm just going to turn it round because I want to see where I'm going. Because I want to put a line down to each of these points from the centre. back up there again. It doesn't matter if this goes a bit wobbly because it actually it's supposed to look like wood so it almost looks like the grain of the wood a bit. Right. That's that one. I think we'll do the surfboard next. Do the big elements first and then we can come back to the smaller ones. Get all the way around the outside to start off with. I just skipped a bit there but that's okay. If you do find that you skip and you make very long stitches, don't worry because when you come back the second time, you can go over that and that will cover that up and it's not a problem. All the way around the outside. Oh, that's moved. That didn't stick down properly. Never mind. I'll make sure I hold that next time. The bonder web obviously didn't stick very well there. Right, back down this side. I'm going to do a little sort of like mound in the sand here because it's again it's sort of sitting in the sand and it stops it looking like it's floating around in space. We're going to go up to that first um, co coloured stripe. I'm going to turn this around so I can see where I am. Stitch down there and back again. Another wobbly one. I really am probably too tired to do this today, but hey, yeah. The old insomnia kicked in last night, so it wasn't fun. There we are. Up to the next one. That's now got these firmly anchored in place. And then I'm going to carefully go up to that one that was loose. It's not worth getting up and going to the ironing board for that little bit. So I will use my scissors or my snippers and I'll just hold them in place. If you've got a stiletto that you use when you're sewing, you can use that as well. That's it, just until we finish stitching that. And then we'll just go around that curve, hold it again. There we are, it's absolutely fine. I'll go a bit once more just to make sure. Down to the next circle. That one wasn't quite struck down either. I think um, my iron plaques wasn't hot enough. Okay, I'm 
still got that one little circle there on its own and that is stuck down, thank goodness. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> this is going well, isn't it? Okay, so that doesn't matter because again, we'll just hold it in place. Let's go around a bit slower. Oh, that's not stitching. Right, see if we can do it. No. And I'll just so I'll pull a bit more thread through. Ah. Okay. Deep breath. See, it doesn't always go absolutely right. I'm just going to test that actually on a little scrap of fabric. See if it's stitching okay. Yeah, there we go, fine. Because I don't want to just keep going and going and going on this if it's not going to be any good. Right, hold it down again. Try again, eh? Yes, there we go. Don't let it beat you. And there's always a workaround. What I would probably normally do if I wasn't videoing this is I'd have got up and just stuck that on with the iron and left it to cool for a bit. Going through the beach ball now and I know that that's not stuck down so I'm ready for it. Let's start on the yellow bit. Get some stitches in there. It's stuck down at the top but not at this bottom bit so... I mean, you don't have to use Bonder Web, I just prefer it because normally um, it keeps things firmly anchored and it does stop some of the fraying that you can get if you don't um, don't use that extra bit of sticky. And then we're going to go up. It's not going to be the roundest ball in the world. to just pop a little line under that just to anchor it to the ground just because that's something I like just to make it look like it's sitting there on the sand that's thread and let's do the sand castle you can't really see it but there is a little sand castle here All stuck down nicely, thank goodness. Go around the whole of the outline once and then I'll put the detail in on this second pass. So that's sort of three top each other. Then do the little flag here. Just one little line there. There we go. Bucket and spade next. I'm putting off doing that table in the flip flops. <laughs> Never mind. I'll do them in a minute. So I'm going to do sort of the top of the bucket and then the handle coming down like that. You can just do the top of the bucket flat if you want to. You don't have to put that sort of ellipse on it. Just do whatever you feel happy with is the main thing. I've cut this spade out really funny, but never mind. There we go. Machine swearing up again. Because that's cut out funny, I'm going to stitch a little bit further inside just to even it up. It 
also by the time you stitched it, you won't notice how strangely that had been cut out. Now, as you can tell, this is not to scale because these are very small and that is an enormous pair of flip-flops. <laughs> hey. I think what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to start because you can see here the bottle overlaps the edge of the table but none of the other bits do. So I'll start to that side and stitch all the way around to that side. Then I haven't got to mess about with um, cutting threads or anything. And I'm going to do around the legs on this first pass. So all the way around the outline first, and then the detail on your second pass with the stitching. Okay, let's cut that and get that out of the way. And back around. And this time, I'm going to go close up that gap at the top of the legs but I do want to go around each leg again okay and then I'll do the wine bottle next squiggles if you like to make it look like there's something written on the label. If you wanted to you could even put a pattern fabric on the label instead of the white. And then empty glasses. You can, again you could put um, something, another bit of fabric or stitch into them to make it look like they're um, They've got wine in, or juice, or whatever you like to drink. I'm going to do the little ellipse on these, just because I like doing it. Let's go around the bottom of the glass as well. There we are. Put as much or as little detail in as you feel happy with. More of an elliptical shape, it's a bit too circular the way I've done that. Oh, this is a funny one. I did that first one quite well, and this one's gone really wonky. But on that second go, we can straighten up any of those funny bits. I mean, it looks a bit scribbly, but it's alright, to be honest. Let's show you that. It doesn't really notice too much anyway. And then I'm going to do the flip-flops, but what I'm going to do is, because uh, I'm going to mark on where the edge of one is and the toe post for them. Because usually I can visualise the details, but for some reason on these I just, I can't. So I'm just helping myself a bit with my stitching. All the way around the outside first, and then back to the details. there okay, then we'll do the toe post and you can do that so it looks a bit wider I'm going to do with that one is I'm going to just put another little line along the edge so that it kind of hints at the depth of the sole there. Okay, 
that is those. And last little touch is some birds in the sky. Do as many as you like. They're, you can draw them on first with a marker pen. I use a water soluble marker, um, which has been used a lot because so I've um, worn out the writing on it. But I only use it for little tiny things, so it lasts ages. But just like the birds that you used to draw in the sky on pictures when you were a child, assuming that everybody drew pictures with birds on when they were children. Willow, that's enough. Got a little dog getting a bit growly there. Very good, really. There's two the adult kids are both upstairs. The neighbour's outside jet washing his patio. So um, I was hoping it wasn't going to be noisy today. Let me see. That's three. I think I want a couple more. Do as many or as few as you like. I just think they just take away a bit of that expansive blue and add a bit more detail. I haven't used my cutter this time, it doesn't matter. Just cut the bobbin thread as well. Um, I think we'll have another one over. I'll do it up here. I'm going to do it here because there's a, quite a big chunk of blue there. They are off in the distance, so it doesn't matter that it's low down. There we are. 